common mistakes that I see people do at door knocking. I think people try to overcomplicate uh, doing this whole process. They try to find out a marketing in the internet. They try to blast on social media rather than focusing on doing the most effective communication and skill that you can master, which is doing door to door. A lot of people, they just want to do a conversational pitch, which basically means they'll just go up to a homeowner once they answer the door saying, asking how they are, something pointing out on their house that they like and try to casual conversation, then go to a sales pitch. Rather, the question that's coming on the customer's mind or the homeowner's mind is, why is this person here? Who is he? And how long are they planning on staying? Is what's lingering in their head while you do that very casual conversation. So I always recommend people to address the problem. Most people think trust and rapport is the most important thing when it comes to sales, which I agree. But I think the most primary reason why people will switch over from the current situation to your service or while they buy something is due to your salesmanship on the problem you're addressing. I think that comes the pain and understanding that they need to make a switch. And plus liking you is just an additional plus to them. If people just get a better understanding that you're a problem solver rather than just a friend saying, here, I have a service that you should buy, I think that will just switch the mentality and give you a more straight line process on how you should approach a cold prospect or going door to door. Second of all, what I see is a lot of these new people just try to reinvent the wheel, which basically means they like to create their own pitch. They like to craft their own thing, which I really respect. But if people have really been in this industry quite some time, a lot of people, what they will do is just keep on switching their pitch rather than mastering one thing. A lot of tendencies that happens is they'll be all over the place and not knowing why they don't succeed or why their numbers are not converting. And sometimes they just don't put enough hours. They'll work only an hour or 30 minutes and call it quits. When really the magic happens when you go from the hour and a half and two hours and if you do that on a very consistent basis. I don't like people to work more than three or four hours just because you'll be burnt out and drained and that's going to carry on you to the next day. I always recommend you have to work for an hour and a half to two hours and you have to stay in a very consistent groove. If you do a very intense workout, you're going to be burned out and not do the same amount of lifting and heavy lifting and consistency the next day. I always recommend people just to have a very consistent number that you're going to hit on a daily weekly basis and that's going to convert to the month and your number should be very, very consistent. A lot of people when they're appointments don't show up or the conversation doesn't go well or they get a lot of no in, not interested they get in their head if you get about 30 no's there's no way you're not going to get an appointment the average rep is about 15 no's they get an appointment i'm about the 10 12 range a lot of people what they try to do is just let the conversation or how the day is going or what's going on in their life dictate on how they should approach their door knocking when they should just really work on the numbers the goals and really the consistent like target that you should be hitting like my goal is always get three or four appointments a day and some people are just fine having a one good conversation or just going out there for 30 minutes and expecting they're going to get a big paycheck and some people do don't get me wrong but they become very inconsistent because they become very complacent on what that 30 minutes was actually able to do for them. I work Saturday, Sundays. A lot of people, I don't know why, they just work on weekdays and don't work on weekends. People will just use Sunday as their day off when I actually look as a Sunday that I'm getting two days back on the weekends. 10 a.m. all the way to 2 p.m., 4 p.m. all the way to 6.30 p.m. I'm getting two days back versus on a Monday when majority of the people are home at 5.30 all the way to 7.30. I like to take advantage of my weekends, my Saturdays and Sundays, so I can get four days within that two days. And I know I talked about like, you want to very keep a consistent days or a, a amount of, consistent amount of hours that you're working. That's why I like to take Fridays off or Monday off just so I can recoup from that. You have to take a day or two off, but I tend to be the guy who just wants to take one day off and just have a really consistent routine going on, going to the gym, eating clean, staying hydrated. You'll be very surprised what nutrition can actually do for you. A lot of times when reps, what I found out in the door knocking space, when they're tired, they always say, I need some coffee. And what I figured out is like majority of the time they're actually dehydrated or they just have some caffeine deficiency rather than saying, oh, I need some more water. I need to take some nutrition. A lot of these people don't stay hydrated, don't have a good meal and just going out there, just dehydrating themselves at the sun all the time. So I always tell people, if you want to stay very consistent and have this sharp mentality, 
have a really good intense workout like crossfit jujitsu or heavy lifting a lot of these people that are really successful in the field of this they do actually do a lot of heavy lifting just just so they can wire themselves physically and mentally on how they should approach it because if you can do one of the hardest things which is like the physicality and the mentality of keep on going it translates it to the doors as well which i highly recommend and it's just about having posture i think a lot of people uh when they go at it they just have a lot of negative concepts of how people are going to perceive them you'd be very surprised that there's actually more neutral respectful nice people rather than jerks out there but i think about out of the hundred maybe two or six might be jerks or not so nice and the rest of them are pretty good conversations and if they're jerks i mean you found people that you need to take off the list people that you no longer have to talk to it's just going to shorten your list it's really about you either sign people up or cross people off the list. And I think people complicate what each conversation could carry on for you and that should dictate your day when really your whole motive is treating people almost like a number but in the middle ground, treating them like human beings as well. You don't want customers that are jerks in your network. Trust me, it's, you don't want that headache. You don't want the stress and the mental degradation that you're going to have. If you're looking for clients, you might as well have clients that are educated, have decent income, well-rounded and respectful within your network. I think that's what you should look for as a client. And you should pick and choose on who you should work with because that's really what a uh, direct-to-consumer market is all about. You dictate on how you want to work, who you should work with, with and how you should go about it as well so many people feel like they should sell all the time do the one touch close sell them at the same day rather than taking their time doing the constant follow-up showing your uh persistency and delicately being persistent what i mean not being pressured of course taking the relentlessness of willing to take the nose uh, gracefully as possible willing to walk away some deals understand that some these customers just need some time it's okay to follow up and it's okay to go back again or go back again until they give you a really hard no. Sometimes you'll be just really surprised like what persistency will actually will do for you and knowing how um, your appearance and your demeanor, the conviction of how much you're willing to follow up just translate how much it's gonna be benefiting them because they see it on it and they see the effort that you're coming from. You'll be very surprised what effort can do for you besides just a little bit words and context of sentence you, you want to say in order to portray them when it comes to your product and service sometimes the effort is just good enough which i recommend everyone to follow up i don't know why a lot of people slack on that because that's really where the money is going to be one of the reasons people are very inconsistent is because they always get complacent on the checks they get following up with the customers that are only warm to them rather than always creating new business you have to treat this like every day is a brand new day and a brand new month is where you get zero amount of sales on the first day of the month and just being constantly relentless about your schedule regardless if you have a good day or a bad day or something's happening in your life or something good is happening in life you always have to be in that constant motion of consistent scheduling i work six days out of the week constantly putting 10 15 hour uh knocking days and that's not including the times that i'm going to be actually in people's houses and doing the closing attempt your job is to keep on marketing keep on closing keep on marketing keep on closing and eventually the amount of doors that you're going to be is going to be a little bit lighter because you're going to get referrals as well the first two years it, it was a struggle for me and i didn't get good at it till that year which is the second year how i was able to do it is able to be with people that was just better with me really mastered a pitch when it comes to the door knocking and i actually just hybrid what i learned from them and make it my own that's how you develop First, you're gonna just use the script, master that. Then you're gonna figure out, okay, I understand why you say it that way. The body posture that you're gonna have. You're gonna understand the full psychology behind it and you're gonna finally make it your own once you get comfortable with that script. Then it's really about just going autopilot and doing the persistent, consistent work over and over and over again and not negotiating how you feel determining if you should work or not that day. And if people can just understand, like, it's just like a habit that you should do, like eating, showering, and if you could approach in that direction, I think that's gonna make your process much smoother, not only just in your sales career, but life in general as well.